This work is very important because coaching is all about change and their theme for this morning is of the changes in the industry. And John Maxwell said, change is inevitable, but growth is optional. But I often on podcasts that I'm on say that procrastination is killing agriculture as well as conflict avoidance. So today my theme will be around what you can do as managers, as Brian has asked me to fill the gap between um, the generations. And this is an important distinction to make. I also, on, on some of your tables there, you have the Do More Ag Foundation QR code. Please take that sticker with you. Um, I was asked last night, Elaine, what are you doing to help the mental health of the producers? And I said, having more robust conversations. And I'm also happy to report to you that the trend is now that more producers are willing to seek help and ask for help when they're in that 75% of the Canadian farm population that is depressed and not dealing well with anxiety and sense of overwhelm. And when we talk about farm transition, Mathieu was talking about helping to decrease the anxiety over the uncertainty of the future. And I just get goosebumps when I say that line because it's in the middle of my key challenge audit. And I have some resources en français and one of them is the key challenge audit to help people self-assess what is giving them anxiety about the whole transition process. So I, I welcome you to ask for that. So this morning, let's talk a little bit um, about tough issues. So thank you, Sylvie, um, from a family farm. And um, Ryan, who's on the producer panel that will follow me today. And many of you are saying bonjour and hi, that's great. So just text me right now if you would give me the honor of what two or three key challenges you see with your customers as to their key challenges and tough issues that they're having a hard time talking about on their farm. And I'll read them back to you when you text them to me. This is a photograph of a young farm woman who's a dairy farmer in Nova Scotia. And um, does my heart sing to see all the young men and women in this room who are sitting on boards uh, with East Gen, West Gen, and Lactinet and Siak, and that you're all together with the same goal of making the industry stronger. So these are some of the bulls that I'm dealing with. One of them is that you've given me, Elaine, too much work. We say ça. The work on, in the farm is never done, right? And there's another saying that the work always expands for the, for what's allowed for its completion. So I use this little guy who's my beanie baby ox as my moniker as a talking stick with farm families. Discuss the undiscussable is trademarked. It's the bull in the middle of the dairy farm. Everybody knows it's there, but nobody is willing to talk about it. So these are some that I have seen many times over the years. Income streams, uh, yes, for dairy farmers. Uh, interest rates up, yes. Difficulties to talk about the financial situation. It will not hurt you to talk about money. Did you know that? And financial transparency, if you look on my card that's on your table, what's the first thing? Financial transparency. What does that mean? For me, that means with a dairy farm I'm working with in Ontario, two young brothers in their mid-30s or approaching 30, not quite yet 30, wives both have off-farms jobs. One of them works for a company you know very well. And they have a $5 million debt on their new barn. They want to start having a family. They're, they're anxious about the future and rates and, and the financial things changing. And it's very hard for them because the father is waiting for them to show more interest in the finances and the cash flow and the projections. But unfortunately, the boys, they're not boys anymore. They're young men. They're husbands. They have spouses are going to that barn every day to work their hardest, but they're not blocking time to have the family business conversations around that financial transparency. So that is a definite problem. Um, another person has written here, lack of a timeline. And in coaching, we call that the neutral zone. So everybody go like this. Pretend you're in an old pickup truck, gear stiff. Yeah, what gear are you in? Neutral, see. Si. Ce n'est pas bon en neutral, right? Not a good thing. So you try and get into first gear or wherever first gear is, then you know you're going to be moving forward. And so I would encourage you, I have this feedback sheet on paper, but there's also a QR code, and I apologize, it's tout en anglais, pas en français, but it's important that you 
write down that you get further ongoing contact. Because one of the blogs I just wrote is the power of targets and deadlines. When Brian and I, and I met at Atlantic Farm uh, Dairy Farm in, in March, he didn't say, Elaine, I want you to come to Quebec sometime. He gave me a date. The date's today, right? And so we have to have targets to hit. So exit timelines. Papa, when are you going to let go? It's a $64 million question because many particular men farmers struggle with stepping back without, whoa, stepping away, right? And this is where the problem is, is the farmers don't have a plan or a map for what their new role is going to be on the farm. So that's a huge problem. I used to dance, so I think I'll be okay if I fall off the stage. We won't worry about that, okay? Um, we also have here on divorce fear. I'm a big proponent of prenuptials and uh, marriage contracts. I've had dairy farmers get engaged. They call me and they say, Elaine, would you please talk to my girlfriend? She won't stop crying because she does not want to sign a prenup. She thinks I don't love her. And so I talk to this young woman and I say, this is a business agreement. This is not a message of your in-laws hating you even before you get married. All right. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on. So you've just had your break, but I'm going to get you to stand up because this is the most important slide that Brian wanted me to show because he's seen this before. So all of you in your 20s, I want you to stand up and stay standing, please. In your 20s. Ah, oh, yeah, nobody. Okay. So uh, we have an older group here. That's fine. So in your 20s, the, the folks who are back managing the cows right now while you're here, it's about independence. And also for young farmers, our, we gave Ian a timeline of, Ian, by the time you're 25, you need to know if, and tell us, are you coming back to farm or are you going to be a WestJet pilot? Because that was his other decision. All of you in your 30s, stand up, please. Enlevé. Oui. Merci. Okay. Melissa, let's say a special blessing on Melissa. She has a dairy farm, a full-time job, and three children. Three kids, yes. So the 30-year-olds are mastering their careers, their off-farm income, their, their income on the farm. You can stay standing just for a second. But also you need to know that what you do is important. And you can sit down now, thank you. If you are 35 years old and your, your dad or mother is 62, where's the conflict? It comes now in your 40s. All of you are in your 40s. It's okay. Declare. It's okay. It won't hurt you. All right. These young men and women need to have equity. They need to have certainty for their future, and they are angry, frustrated, and sad because papa or mama is not letting go of transfer of some equity. Does this Is this understood? By the time you're 40, you need to have power and control over your future. Do you understand that? You can nod your head. Yes. Okay. Go gay. Okay. Now we have the 50-year-olds. These are the people. Yes. Okay. Quality of life. Simplification. Why am I working so hard on this dairy? I've been milking cows for 30 years already, for Pete's sake. Wait. Oui? So I had a farmer in New Brunswick, I can't remember his name at the moment, but he has a famous son now. He said, Elaine, I've milked cows for 30 years. I'm done milking cows. I'm going to let my son do it and his wife. That's perfect. And I'm going to go and start a different company. Okay. So in your 50s, what does it say? Quality of life. Simplifying. And so my question for you this morning is, what do you truly want today and in the future? because it's different than what you wanted years ago, correct? You want something different now. Okay, may I say, please sit down. 60s, I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. Ah, bon, tout le monde ici. Okay, so in your 60s, which is obviously what Matthew said already, I am 66, and I am not, I'm not sad to tell you my age. I have bad news. The average age of a widow in Canada is 56. Wow. My mother died of an asthma attack in the middle of harvest at age 65. So I've now outlived my mother, God bless her, who was a very strong woman and a farm partner. 
in your 60s, we talk about legacy, starting over. And I, I, go, I went physically like this. I won't go off the stage. But there's a wonderful webinar called by Dick Whitman called Stepping Back Without Stepping Away. Now, you've honored Brian last night with his industry award and Pierre and Dr. Um, Kelton. These are all men who put their heart and soul for decades into this industry. They're not going away. Their wisdom is still very important, as is the wisdom of my husband, who's also 66. So when it says starting over, what are you, where are you going to start over? And I want you to think about that on the plane home or in the car home. What is the next chapter for you? Okay, Messi, sit down. Um, Mint, anyone in your 70s here? Oh, Ralph. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, Ralph, I'm going to give you a prize later. Um, that's important. And Ralph's going to be sharing with you with his son, Ryan, about their transition plan. So that's marvelous. So Ralph still has a story. And he made a comment to me at the break. I said, no, Ralph, your life is not over. The next chapter is going to be different. Okay. Anyone here in their 80s? 90s, just have to check because in Alberta, there's always a 90 year old in the room. Okay, they just, they just, they have lots of cows in Alberta. It's because they chase all those cows for so long. So here we have um, one of the things. Okay, so I'm just going to read you a couple more texts. Elaine, one of our problems is farm succession with the on farm son, me, having trouble moving partially, not only because farm fa fa finances are entangled. Sorry with helping the non-farm siblings in their business ventures of the farm. You love all of your children. Money does not equal love. And so the definition that you will see on this card is how can you help everyone in the family be successful farm and non-farm? And you have to have those conversations around transparency. Okay, and then this one is... Um, from uh, another person who speaks mostly French, and he's he's having, um, yes, interesting transitions in, in what he's going to do to rise up things for his entire family. Does each generation have the same vision and or support of the different vision for the business? And this is where personal style indicators come in happy, because my son Ian was in nine wedding parties. People love my son. And Melissa, I need to tell you that all of my grandbabies are IVF. So I sat through that whole presentation and say, thank God for IVF. Because I am a grandmother because of IVF for people. And very thankful for those three miracles with 100% uptake and three beautiful grandchildren. But as my daughter-in-law was just coming into the family, before they even got engaged, we did a personal style indicator. And this is important for all of you to understand. You have all these tools that Dr. Jeffrey talked about yesterday about what happens for cows to make cow's life better. We have all kinds of interesting technology and assessment now for people to find out how they're wired. And so does each generation have the same vision and is supportive of a different vision for the business? And where things are going to get stuck is when mama and papa have different visions and nothing's going to happen when the founders disagree. So Ian comes back, he's highly people oriented. My son Wes, or my husband Wes is ambitious, determined. I am called influential. My daughter-in-law is called, um, in French, you would say parfait. She's very detail-oriented. She's perfectionistic-oriented. She'd make a great office manager. Here's the quote. Different is not wrong. It's just different. Okay? So we have to accept. When we look at this list, digital documents. I heard, listened to a wonderful presentation with Power Farm and Rog Sake in March in Regina. Taylor Phillips is out of Regina. He's using, using QR codes on the sides of sprayers for mix sheets, Brian, so everybody gets the mix sheet the right way. You can use the same thing in the barn, right, when you have your SOPs for the barn management. So digital documents, communication, using texting, just like we're doing this morning for you to have a conversation with me as a speaker so it's not just one-sided but texting in WhatsApp or group management um, systems. And, and another thing that you said, Elaine, another challenge we have here, and I'll go to it because I haven't read it yet, social pressure to meet consumers' requirements. 
and employees and our children are better halves not interested in farming. And um, you can translate for me, Matthew. Matthew, Mac Amendurov, Susufianian says, hours of work I can understand and understanding the needs. Yep, okay. Financial problems. Hours of work. The needs of the consumer. And they don't understand all the hard work we do as farmers. But And the other one that comes in here, which I get often, is farm work and family life balance, which, by the way, is not possible. So I have a very old webinar that I did for um, Farm Management Canada. You can find it. It's called Managing Stubborn Farmers. None of you. Okay, none of you are stubborn, right? Managing stubborn farmers is called a polarity because this, this workload expectation is a dance. So it's the dance between we work in the barn, we work on lactonet boards, we, we do our work, but we also have to have time for play and restoration. Does that ever stop? No. That's why it's called a polarity because a polarity is something that never goes away. It just has to be managed. So when you say that that, that is a key challenge for you in this management gap, um, that's, that's something you just have to have a mindset shift around. Another one, Elaine, is difficult again to talk about the financial situation. Okay. Well, I think we have most of them. Here's another one. Debt servicing multiple businesses, which you already just told me. Elaine, we have people who want to grow the dairy farm, but we also want to grow our processing side. So the milk, the ice cream, the yogurt, the A2 milk, the kefir, all the other things that these people are producing, right? And then you have robotics, which is great for labor issues. But I've been on dairy farms in Nova Scotia with people who fix robotics. And they say, Elaine, the robots can also break down at 3 o'clock in the morning. Right, And somebody has to go and pay attention to that. So this is all of the things that you are dealing with. But this morning I wanted to drill down for you a very simple equation that I use with all of our families. And I put an old bicycle on here for all the Dutch farmers in the room here. They're horrified with that picture. But I also use it as a reminder that my husband doesn't have a lot of good hobbies. He works a lot, but we do not work on Sunday, which is great on our farm because we're grain farmers, not dairy farmers. So we don't have livestock to take care of like you do. But he has an e-bike now. So this is Wes's answers. When the accountant is coming with us, I am in my third succession plan. I did it in 1992 with my father-in-law while his brain was shrinking. We went to the accountant office and he said, pretend Elaine is not in the room. What would you do with this farm if Wes got killed at the railway station or at the track? And then my, my in-law said, well, that's easy, Elaine. We take back the farm. And I, I just sat there. I said, seriously? I gave you my government income from being a, a county agent with Manitoba Agriculture. I've given you two grandchildren. I've been here for 11 years. And you're going to take back the farm? I didn't get Irish. Okay. I just said, I said, oh, I'm curious. What if I just stay here because I have no intention of going back to Winnipeg where my home farm is and I want to raise Ian and Erica to be the next generation on this farm? And the accountant said, Abe and Margaret, what do you think? And they said, sounds good. Okay. Now you have to understand that conversation took less than five minutes. And again, it's very emotional for me because we have a genetic disorder and I know you love genetics, Brian. Fragile X syndrome. So two of, three of my nephews are mentally challenged. And my sister-in-law, who's a carrier, is now 73 and her brain is shrinking. So this is a big deal for our family. So we had to act out of a health crisis issue. We had the conversation that I just shared with you on January the 6th, 1992. And we signed ownership of our grain farm on June 16th, 1992. Why can I remember these dates, Barbara? I can remember these dates because they're very important milestones in the growth of your and legacy of your farm. So here's Wes's answers. And I, I, I want you in your head to think, what is your answer for this, regardless of whether you're the founder or the next gen? How much income do you need from your farm to have the quality of life you want to have for your family? Wes's answer, 120000 My answer from QuickBooks, 75000 Where's the gap? The gap is in charitable giving and investments and other things. Where are you going to live? as close as I can to my cows forever. 
right? You love your cows. I understand. Je comprends. I had a, a Mennonite dairy farmer from Manitoba say, Elaine, why am I crying? I, and I won't use his real name. I'll say, Charlie, the reason you're crying is because you sold the cows and you loved your cows. He said, but nobody died. I said, yes, Charlie, the cows didn't die, but you lost something. You gave something up. Housing is a huge problem in dairy families because somebody has to be close to the cows where the action is, and you have expectations about how much that daughter-in-law of yours should be spending on a house, not $500,000, okay? And the fairness piece, just so you know, we only have an hour together today or 45 minutes, but the, I have a whole presentation on fairness on YouTube, and I've given you the link right here, so it's right there. So you, what? my question for you today, if you feel, notice these are Angus, right, Sylvain, good notice. These are Angus bulls from New Zealand, from my friend Mandy. Are these bulls fighting or are they playing? What, que tu penses? what do you think? Exactly. They're just butting heads. So just because you're butting heads in your conversation, it's not a bad thing. But here's, here's my three C's, and I want you to capture this on the sticky side of your brain today. What do you expect? Clarity of expectations for you as you age in place on your farm and clarity of expectations for the next gen. Second question, by when? Very powerful business expression. By when can I expect, Michelle, that you will have this report for me? By when can I have all of the semen ready for what we're going to do next week, next Friday? Like, that's my expectation, okay? A certainty of timelines. And then the third three um, comment for C is commitment to action. I already know what we're having for lunch. By the way, it's poulet and salmon, okay? You're having chicken and salmon for lunch. The cook didn't just decide today that that's what we were having for lunch. All of that had to be prepared. And here's the expression, talk does not cook rice. Chinese proverb, all right? We have to be committed. Now, this is where the excitement is. And I'm not going to, whoops, sorry. Go back a second. Oh, whatever. Okay, see change on the left-hand side, which is the older generation, and on the right-hand side, it says money management. This is a very busy slide, and I don't expect you to process it all. My point in showing this slide is there's a lot of layers of complexity going on in people's brains, and the older generation wants has a high work ethic. We love relationships and opportunity and wisdom, but the next gen wants, look at that, work life, and it's in your text. They want innovation, they want responsibility, they want to take risk, and they have a lot of energy. But on the right-hand side, it says they're not that strong usually with money management. And that's where some of this management gap is coming. The other thing is I want you now, if you know the 4-H pledge, to say it with me. I pledge my head to clear thinking. Come on, touch your head. You have to touch your head, please. Okay, touch your head. It's the pushback intellectually of not understanding IVF for cows or whatever, okay? Now, and I pledge what? My heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and the world. Why I want you to do the pledge is because this is where when you go back to your farms or to your producers, this is where the pushback on change is going to come. This is based on the work of Rick Maurer who wrote the book, Why Don't You Want What I Want? So, Understanding shareholder loans and agreements or prenups or marriage contracts. Does this feel good? Mama, it's okay if you go to a different house. We have a beautiful house for you to go to. And farmers are very much into a way behavior. They, they solve problems all the time. They, you tell a farmer to make a goal and he'll go, he'll go are you kidding? No, I've got to, I got too many other problems to solve. I don't have time for that. The then the next thing is in your gut, trusting your intuition. You understand that your gut has thousands of neurons that are connected to your brain. And I don't know what the expression is in French, but if it doesn't feel good in your gut, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. Repeat after me. I think, I feel, I need, I want. I think, I feel, I need, I want. I think it's time we get more certainty on this farm. I need to know how to build equity. I want... I want us to start putting some agreements in place and 
this is the sentence that you can use. I think I feel I need, I want. I think it's time, dad and mom, for us to get out of the neutral zone. I need to be in gear. And so you have many hats and many roles. When I trained as a Hudson coach in Santa Barbara, California 20 years ago, this is called map four. So today I want you to think about what are you doing today in this moment to take really good care of you, to have the health and the body mechanics, mental, spiritual, physical, emotional energy to do well? How are you going to stay married or in partnership? Divorce is expensive. Did you know that? Yeah. And did you know the average age of divorce is 46 in Canada? And the average year of marriage for divorce in Canada is 32 years, not seven years. Think about that. It's called graying divorce. She's watched Oprah and she's decided to have the life she always wanted. And when I ask in the coaching conversation, when is it her turn to get what she wants? The husband says, Elaine, you are so fired. Yeah. And that's an actual conversation I had one day. So these are your six roles and this never changes, but the, the roles, what you're doing in these seasons changes. So what are you doing for self-care as a couple? What do you want for your family? What do you want for your off farm work? Many of you are in two, in two stages. Many of you work off farm and have farms. How do you want to build more connection? Coming into the room yesterday and hearing all of you buzzing in the afternoon was electrifying because I felt like I was at a huge party because this is the first time you've been together in three and a half years, right? All of you. And you need this connection. You need the emotional network that you have in this special community. And then how do you want to build community where you live? So now is the time to get off the couch. This is me in front of my canola field. That's my real couch. I want you to think about changing your thinking. Elaine, we have too, no time. We, it just, I think you put in one of your texts here. Okay, so if I asked you in your text, I want you to tell me this. What is stopping you from doing what you need to do? Okay. So dad is young in his mid fifties and my children are coming into their teens. Dad is too young to retire but I can't plan for my children who are now in their teens without ownership. Yes. And I wrote um, an article on this called strong warning for 80 year olds. If you are 80 or 75 and you're hanging on to all the equity and you're not transitioning at least part of the wealth to the 60 year olds, then the 60 year olds don't have ownership and equity to transfer to who? The 25 year olds. So you're, you're constipated in a way, right? You're, hold, you're holding up the system. Yeah, that's a terrible metaphor. I've never used that one before. <laughs> so what you're doing is you want to think about, and this is an interesting text, the culture is the glue that's holding your farm together. So it's what you believe to be true. Do you believe that there's abundance? Do you believe that there's enough wealth and equity in your dairy business for everyone? Secondly, how are you behaving with each other? And thirdly, how are you making decisions? And in my perfect world, Neil, as a coach, is that you make decisions collaboratively because two heads are better than one or three or four, right? And so I live on an amazing farm where everybody has respected. This is the cover of my book called Farming's In-Law Factor. One of these eggs is not like the other. Hashtag, I am the brown egg. I'm the daughter-in-law and I have no voice on this farm. Now, you have a lot of smart, well-educated, strong women in this room, so you better pay attention, men and women. I'm not gender biased, okay, just so you know. The problem is there's a lot of energy, and I spoke to the Grain Farmers of Ontario Women Seminar in November, and these are women agronomists who have fathers who just cannot get their head wrapped around that a woman can be a successor on their farm. So, Melissa, there's a whole other career for you, coaching other women on how to go through that transition um, thing. So the father-in-law factor, letting go, being curious. It's our farm. It's not my farm. The mother-in-law factor, she picks up the phone. She says, Lena, I don't know what you can do for our family, but at the end of the day, I want everybody to come home for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I need this family to be kept intact. No promises. Are you willing to do the work on communication and respect and financial well-being? 
The daughter-in-law, as I mentioned, needs a voice. She has a, a set of fresh eyes. She grew up in a different farm or a different situation and sees things from a different perspective. And the son-in-law or son wants to share those agreements as well. But he's kind of in this neutral zone, especially if he's the son-in-law, and some of you are in this situation, because he comes from a different way of solving conflict and communicating, and he's now an employee on his wife's farm. When does he become an equity shareholder? And um, I'm going to defer to Melissa again, but Melissa has a, has a husband who's the son-in-law, and she's got a great solution. So talk to her at lunch. All right. So we have different perspectives. Unfortunately, I have a hole in this beach ball. But what color do you see from where, you where you're sitting? Just shout it out. Green? Nobody can see blue or red because I'm... And if you see one of these, please mail me a new one because I gave my other one away last week in Ontario and nobody gave it back. So I'm sure it's a good beach ball. This is important because we have another assessment that we use called the conflict dynamic profile. Remember we said different is not wrong. It's just different. And so the, the language I want you to use is, I'm just curious. And in French, you say, je suis curieux. Oui? So come to all of your conversations about transition with curiosity in a respectful way. Know that if you get yourself a beanie baby bull or soft object, you can use this as you're talking and pass it around the table to give everyone a voice. And I worked with the dairy farm in Vancouver Island. He said, Elaine, we had to make a big decision in the middle of the barn. I said, and so what did you use? He said, I grabbed a plastic water bottle. And we had a meeting in the middle of the barn with the plastic water bottle. And you say, oh, Elaine, this sounds really cutesy. Nay, nay. This is not cutesy. This is effective. It also has to be soft so that when you squeeze it, you don't hurt yourself. And when you throw it to the next person, they catch it, and it doesn't hurt Matthew. Okay? So the thing, the thing with great meetings, and this is obviously you had to park on your calendar to come to Lactonet in Quebec City. You put it on your calendar, you showed up. Congratulations. But what's happening in farm families is they are not parking this on their calendars and they go by and, oh my goodness, Brian, it's Thanksgiving. Oh, now it's Christmas. We'll do it after we get back from the south from our hot holiday in, in January. Oh, I'm sorry, Elaine, it's calving time. No, we'll do it after after Easter. No, Matthew, we'll do it after planting. No, we'll do it after haying. No, we'll do it after silage. Somebody just got their silage done on Sunday. Congratulations. Oh, all these things. And what has just happened? What did I just do? I just went through an entire farm year saying, we'll do it later. But you want to focus on the next 30 years going forward, do you have the income you need? And if you don't have a financial planner, you need one because farmers need financial planners. You need to decide how much that house is going to cost. And you are not going to chop up your farms like a piece of pie. And I was talking to Jean-Marc and encouraging him because Jean-Marc's going to BC to visit people out there in Chilliwack and Abbotsford in, in, the, in November. And I said, Jean-Marc, do you understand now that the land in the Fraser Valley in BC is now $120,000 an acre. Can you just let that sit for a minute? We are talking about big wealth, and we have to decide. So you have your little white papers in front of you here. This is an action step that is going to be kicking your butt, so to speak, to get something done. Draw a line down the middle of that white paper right now, please. Draw a line down. And on the left-hand side, I want you to write farm assets or business assets if your business is not a farm. Left-hand side is farm assets. On the right-hand side, I want you to write personal. And I'll use our farm as an example. So our land, 5,000 acres of grain land in southwestern Manitoba, is worth north now 15 mil. So I would write down 15 million for land. Now, you can keep these papers to yourself. Nobody else has to see them unless you want them. That's fine. The equipment. My, my John Deere X9 combine is 1.2 million. Yuck. Yeah. And it still breaks down too, by the way. So I don't know. I, I don't know what our equipment's worth now. It's north of two to three million. And I'm not saying these numbers to brag. I'm just giving you an example. I have 86 grain bins on my farm. 
My son just built a $1.2 million seed cleaning thing. There's a new farm office. The new farm shop that we built five years ago is now worth the same price as our equipment shed that we built this summer that was $267,000. The price doubled in five years, just like land has been doing. Okay, on your list, you have inventory of all your assets on the farm. Now go to the right side, the personal side. What is your personal net worth? Your RESPs, your RSPs, your investments, your stocks. Oh, Elaine. Said I am. Just nothing. There's not much on the personal side, right? For and you don't have to shake your head. This is personal to you. My point is, is I'm a home economist by degree, and I want all families to have an excellent quality of life. This exercise with farm families shows them. They want to keep the farm intact. I haven't even asked you the value of your cows. And I and quota, whoo, quota, we just park over there on another sheet in a parking lot because it's a big question mark. And it also has value to you, correct? But my point in this exercise is where is your income going to flow from as you age and go forward? Are you going to draw forty, fifty thousand dollars a year from the cows? And are you going to draw forty, fifty thousand dollars a year from your personal investments, stocks, cottage, whatever you're going to do? Do you see how this is helpful or very frightening? Right? It's paying. And I, I was quoting Dr. Jeffrey. He says, "Mine the data. The data will help you." And this is the data as a farm family coach that I get all of my families to do. Because did you know that four percent return on two million dollars is how much? $80,000. And $84,000 is what those of you younger families here with a spouse and two to three kids need as family living on a farm. You need $80,000 a year. But what's happening with this management gap that Brian asked me to talk about is people are fighting over this. Compensation. I want you to recall those two young men with the $5 million debt on the barn their net, what's sticking in their jeans at the end of the month, is under $2,000. What's 2,000 times 12? $24,000. What's the gap between $24,000 and 84? 60 grand. Oh, that's okay. 60 grand comes from the other spouse. So right now we're okay. But what's going to happen when she goes on maternity leave? What's going to happen when she decides that she wants to stay and work with the cows and become farm labor and an employee and a shareholder on the farm? Do you see why people are not doing the work? Because they are they are they are gripped by the anxiety over what fairness is in terms of helping everybody be successful. So I have to answer a text here because someone has forgotten that I'm in Quebec. No. I'm not coming to the meeting. Conflict avoidance. So here's how we're going to create solutions. We're going to actually deal with the undiscussable. And if you would take your feedback sheet, two things. I'm happy to give you a copy of my presentation in English. And Michaela, if you can give me the copy of the PDF slides in French, we'll supply those all to you in English and French. I want all of you to be comfortable about understanding how to get a hold of me because I'm happy to walk the journey ahead with you down the road because we are all on a journey. And one of you said to me, Elaine, it's not really over till I die, but I really don't want to die. I said, I don't want you to die either, right? But here's the deal. I buried my sister at age 23 to a drunk driver going from my farm back to her farm. I buried my father-in-law, one with a brain shrinking disease, in 1997. Ten months later, I buried my mother. A few years later, I buried my mother-in-law to cancer and my father-in-law to Alzheimer's. So I've done palliative care four times, and I have a certificate in, in palliative care. As a coach, I want you to see possibility. I want you to know that you do not have to go on this journey alone. And you want to do positive conflict behavior. So here's the positive behavior. What is the need? And here's the $64 question. What do you need in this moment today and going forward on this farm? 
It's an excellent book if any of you are bookies and love audiobooks. It's called Nonviolent Communication by Dr. Marshall uh, Goldenberg, and he sold over 5 million copies. And one of his most powerful questions is, what do you need? Second thing, it's okay to cry, even when the cows have to leave. And you have loss. You have to express your emotion. And that's why I love the French so much, because, Matthew, when you greet each other, you go back, back, and you're embracing each other, and you have lots of emotion and passion in how you speak. That is good. And here's what you remember to say. I think it's time that we get more certainty in our farm. I feel sad and frustrated because I can't live with the pain of not knowing. And yesterday, if you were watching Jeremy, he had a technology that was supposed to help fix the pain of not knowing. And that's what it is with this bull. It's not knowing what the future is going to look like. Another thing you get to do is reach out and ask for help. Did you know it's okay to ask for help? And did you also know that it says in the wisdom literature, you do not have because you do not ask. Okay, so make the first move. Some of you are going to have to cool down and delay responding like Wes did when Ian was in love and engaged and it was a wet year to seed and he landed a big air seeder and a huge tractor in mud up to the machine box. Wes got to the field and goes, I'm not even going to talk to Ian right now. I'm just going to phone the excavator guy. And we had to get an excavator to get that tractor out of that wet spot. So sometimes you have to not bite your tongue, but you have to think before you speak. And that's it. My time's up. So we are going to have a panel now. And I have all of these tools for you. This is what I just did for you. And the fairness conversation is on your postcard. So when Brian and I were collaborating as to the outcomes of this, I want you to know it's your farm, it's your family, it's your choice. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, make a really good choice when you get home to be the best person you can be to deal with that culture of your farm and to ask really powerful questions. And if you need more ideas on how to ask those, I'm here to serve. And may you all enjoy harmony through understanding. Bonne journée, à la prochaine. Well, I got told to stay here. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Is there any questions for Elaine? They're stunned. It's deer in the headlights. Private questions, you can ask me by texting. That's why I did that. If you want to ask me another question on my text. Yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to make a comment to Elaine. Um, in the room, we have the farmers, and, and like there are farmers that are board members here. But another important element of having you present this to us as industry players is that awareness to our clients. And many of the people in this room, like you mentioned, Jean-Marc, who, who's the manager of our national the manager of all of our field services, 250 employees that go across Canada, and they're every day seeing farms. And, and that's the awareness here that I also want a ripple down effect from our management teams to our employees that are actually face to face with our farmers. And I think that's another element that I want this awareness. And I think you've done a great job uh, in teaching us and creating that awareness. And of course, showing the resources that can be available to, to farmers. So I think there's another element not always the farmers in the room, right. but our awareness as industry people about the needs of our farmers that are in our industry. So that's, it's not specifically a question to you, Elaine, no. but it is intention. another, it's, it's, it's yeah, your intention. It's, exactly. Wait. So on your tables, you have those little beautiful podcast stickers, put them in your pocket and give them to someone who likes to listen to podcasts while they're in the cow barn. I, I, and my name is not always easy to spell. So when I do podcasts, I just say go to farmfamilycoach.com. So if you can just remember farmfamilycoach, 
And also for the Francophones, I have a very good friend who lives close to Melissa, actually. Her name is Pierrette de Rossier. And Jean-Marc has her contact information. I've already given it to Jean-Marc. And my other friend is south of Montreal, and her name is Martine Deschamps. And both of these women I, are my friends in Quebec. And have huge regard for the work they do. So we also have francophone speaking coaches and progressive dairy when they choose to also publishes my work on Francais sometimes. Pad Tudodam, but that's okay. All right. So blessings on your journey. I think you're next with the producer panel, and I'll just hang out in the front row here with Brian. And the clicker is at the front here. Okay. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Thank you.